uh, welcome uh, everybody to intervene to succeed. Uh, as you may know, we're very, very happy and uh, we're very thankful that you're all here. And uh, I am personally, we are very privileged and honored to be your host today. Uh, as you may know, my name is Michelin Amar. I'm from Likib Shak Pedagogical uh, Math and Science and my co-host, Julie. Yes, my name is Julie Robitaille. I am on Likib Shak Pedagogical as your language and social science uh, pedagogical consultant. We also, I also have uh, option courses uh, so everything that you can think of that's an option is also uh, in my mandate. Okay. So our workshop objectives for today are uh, the following. So mm -hmm. we would hope that by the end of the session, you will have been introduced to the tool Intervene to Succeed. As well, we are hopeful that you'll have discussed the observable, measurable behaviors and possible interventions for them and that you will be able to implement uh, Intervene to Succeed in your milieu. And that's our pretty much the biggest objective of all for today's presentation. Um, and notice that today's presentation, the breakdown of the session, it's gonna go in mainly three, three uh, sections. The first, we're gonna talk about the introduction, the idea behind the, the, the collection, the Intervene of Succeed document. We're gonna have a group work and of course we have plenary where we're gonna bring it back and have uh, a plenary conversation. All right, so as a rationale or the, the reason behind putting together Intervene to Succeed, um, we could pretty much uh, round it up to the five W's that some of you may be familiar with if you teach language arts, for example, but we did we did boil it down to the five W's so that it would be easier for everybody to um, to understand the rationale. So the what is a reference document that is intended to better understand adult learners and their challenges. The who is pretty much anyone that is in the room or in the context with the students, whether you're a teacher, a professional, facilitator, even an exam invigilator, it could happen pretty much anywhere at any time. And that's the where and the when right after. Anywhere you are with a student, with students, mainly in the classroom, of course, and whenever observable and measurable behaviors occur. Why does intervene to succeed exist, it is to better serve the adult learners, identify their needs, adapt our interventions, and improve the support towards their success. Of course, with the rationale comes principles that guide the, uh, the use and the putting together of this particular tool. By the way, it's a dynamic tool. It will be updated, uh, renewed, Hopefully you will use it and make it your own uh, with regards to your centers or your school board's uh, contexts, of course. Now, the two principles are effective teaching and tutoring. Uh, and in effective teaching, we have several strategies like daily reviews, asking questions, guided practice, breaking down new material, provide examples, provide scaffolding for concepts. And all of these can apply to the use of Intervene to Succeed, as you will see in your conversations. And when tutoring, uh, as far as tutoring goes, well, of course, the principles of empathy, reflection, questions, and I messages are also at the core of the Intervene to Succeed tool. So just to let you know that this wonderful resource was actually uh, of uh, the fruit of like tens of years of actually practice um, uh, action research, if you want, uh, led by a wonderful, wonderful team. And of course, uh, uh, their leader is uh, Karin Jack, who's an orthopedagogue and well known in her field. So it is actually put together and designed uh, with the first responders in mind, like I call the teaching first responders, anyone who has contact with the students. Uh, 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 as a first liner, if you want. Um, it's to adapt uh, the intervention to each person based on context and expectations. And these interventions are only implemented on observable and measurable, uh, measurable characteristics. So um, it's mainly to lessen the stigma around, around um, uh, learn, uh, learning differences and also to really support the student where it needs to be supported. 
So let's uh, not delay the time and let's take a look at the, um, intervene to succeed. Everybody has access to this document. And um, I want to bring your attention, of course, to the table of content. And if you take a look over here, these are all topics um, of, of, of interest to all of us because our main students, uh, one way or another, touch one or many of these topics. And I just want to bring to your attention also the way it was designed. Uh, th this document was designed really on, on two columns. One column that's mainly on observable, measurable behavior. And the other one is the strategy that teachers or um, first, like I call it educational first responders, uh, could implement in their class as a first year. Um, that being said, let's not delay. Uh, let's uh, get you to what we need to get you to do. Thank you, Micheline. So uh, I'm going to invite you, as I wrote in the chat, to please open the Intervene to Succeed document so that you have it on hand uh, when you are sent to your breakout rooms. As well, you will have a participants booklet that you should also have. I'm going to put the link in the um going to put the link in the chat so you can open it as well in preparation for the next part. So we're going to give you a, uh, it says 15 minutes here. You're going to probably think that this is not a lot to, to, uh, to go through the whole thing, but you're going to actually look at scenarios. One scenario per breakout room. Um, there are four of them. I, yes. So the four will be, we, we're going to go over them in the plenary, of course, uh, once we're done, but everybody will have one uh, scenario that they will be responsible for, if you will. And in your team, in your breakout room, we're going to invite you to carefully read and discuss the assigned profile that you have. Now, of course, being the extraordinary uh, educator that you are, you may feel like diverging a little bit and maybe talking about actual things that you are going through in your classrooms or in your centers. And we encourage you to try and stay as much as possible on task with the profile that you'll be given. So you will have a spokesperson that you will assign to your subgroup, so your breakout rooms. And that spoke person is going to be the one responsible for talking about your decisions and what you thought uh, the interventions could be with regard to the person in your scenario. All the scenarios of, are, of course, fic fictional, fictitious. They do not exist, but they were put together with uh, a, a few a, a few situations in mind, of course. Um, they are also presented in a, a type of blog entry format. So you will have a hello all or hi everyone or please help me out type of uh, type of uh, presentation. So it's just the format that we gave it to make it a little dynamic. What you're going to be given as a task is as follows. You're going to have to highlight, okay, or uh, or acknowledge, if you will, observable and measurable uh, behaviors that you see in the scenario that you will have to uh, work with. And of course, there are several possible answers here, okay? So do not worry. In 15 minutes, you probably won't have time to go through every single possible thing that you find that is an issue or that should require an intervention, but as many as you can is fine. You will prioritize, of course, what you feel is the most pressing or the most urgent to, uh, to uh, intervene uh, about. And in the booklet, if you go to the table of content and try to see, is it motivation? Is it self-esteem? Is it so on and so forth? You'll go to that page and find possible interventions that you could uh, that you could use for that particular scenario. And we're going to give you 15 minutes in your breakout rooms. They are already set and you will be given, uh, you'll be given access to a breakout room uh, in a random fashion. So you'll be assigned a scenario, you write your notes in the booklet. Uh, you'll notice that there are several pages in the booklet to write notes, just use one that is assigned to the scenario uh, that you're used that you are uh, led that you are sent to. After the 15 minutes, you'll be called back to the main room, and there will be a plenary session where we will talk about what you have 
uh, what you've discussed, what you are, what you're, what you're acknowledging, and how you would intervene. So welcome back, everybody. Thank you very much for. We could see that your notes were adding to uh, to the slides. It was really, really awesome to see uh, all of your responses and where you were going with each of the scenarios. So if we look at the plenary, what we thought of doing for the next 20 minutes or so was to look at what you had to say for each of the each of the uh, scenarios. So what we would like to do is give priority to the group that was working, the two groups that were working for each scenario, and the spokesperson could give us an idea of where the team went in terms of interventions. And if you want, you can put your hand up and and uh, Avi or uh, myself, we will see that your hand is up. And if you, if you want to add something, of course, to the conversation, you can. We're going to try and make sure everybody gets their uh, gets their turn. So if we go to the first scenario, which was Danny. So for the ones who weren't, uh, weren't working on Danny, I'm going to read the scenario for you. And then we'll let the other two groups uh, probably uh, have a conversation about what they thought about. So everybody will be aware of Danny's profile. So um, hello all, for the past few weeks, I have been dealing with difficult situation. I teach math, which I'm very passionate about, and I'm currently covering material that is a little more complex than usual. I do my best to demonstrate how useful the subject matter is. I even explain how essential it can be uh, to their future, in their future. Most of the students follow instruction, but some can be challenging. Lately, some of them have started to show signs of disinterest. One of them, Danny, is especially rude and admin um, and kind of ringleader. He regularly voices his discontent with the content and calls my course useless. Yesterday, I found out that Danny works on their family farm and is forced to take course uh, to take my course in order to get the credits left for his Sec 5 diploma. I have never thought to ask him, um, and I want to give him what he needs, but I cannot accept his behavior anymore. What would you recommend? So this is a scenario, and I guess uh, in room one and two, you had shared this profile. So I don't know if anybody in room one and two would love, uh, would like to, to talk about uh, our Danny over here. Please, Vicky, go ahead. Uh, okay, so uh, for Danny, we said that the uh, most important thing, first and foremost, is uh, establishing a connection with the students uh, right from the beginning of the year, um, perhaps even, you know, taking time away from the academics initially and just really getting to know our adult learners. And uh, if that had been done, well, the teacher would know that right from the beginning that the student worked on a farm and may even know that this isn't necessarily the student's choice, but a family pressure to, to be there and get their secondary five diploma. So that's the first thing. So if you can create that connection with them, it'll make the, the rest of it a lot easier. Um, establishing really uh, clear expectations of the students, not too many, but keeping it simple and respect being the first and foremost of, of themselves, of the environment in which they're learning and, um, and the, the teachers and the students also in the classroom, um, having them understand that adult ed, contrary to the youth sector, is not mandatory. So those who are there want to learn and, and want to have the most of their experience. So it's important for them um, to be actively, you know, participating and be positive leaders um, there. Uh, we said um, also as far as strategies, um, you know, really providing examples that are relevant to the student. So if he's working on a farm, well, in math, you can certainly have a lot of examples that will allow um, the student to make connections and find usefulness in math with regards to farming. We'd also said that um, getting the student involved and, and participating as much as possible, asking lots of questions, perhaps even having the student be a positive learner by, you know, leading a specific question or, um, you know, getting all of them, especially with this whole online business happening more and more of uh, not always sure if they're even there really behind the screen. But if you're often having questions and getting students participating, um, it'll allow the teacher to have a better idea. And our last thing was just a lot of our centers have counselors um, that, that can, you know, and it's, 
instead of making them feel, you know, pointed out or whatever, having them, you know, do regular check-ins with all of the students to get an idea. And if they're having, if the teacher's observing specific things in class, maybe having the counselor focus their questions with that student and, and trying to dig a little deeper to see if maybe they need other services um, or some additional resources for them. That, that is that is wonderful. And this is interesting. Um, before we go and make a link to the Actually Intervene to Succeed document, uh, would group two would like to add, uh, please, uh, for room two to the scenario? Yeah, for us, we said to try to take an interest in Danny and establish more positive rapport, help him understand his impact on the class and also set very clear boundaries so that he knows what to kind of even the playing field, if you will. Um, ask what his goals are for the future. Link the need to complete mandatory courses, including those he hates. Um, it's kind of a life lesson. We all have to do stuff we don't necessarily like or want to do throughout our entire life. So it's to, to draw that analogy for him and help him understand that, you know, in some cases you just kind of have to do what you have to do, but to that, that you're there to partner with them and to work through it with them, face those challenges together and find ways to make it more relevant. Um, where he works on a farm to uh, relate to the fact that farm life is full of challenges, draw the parallels between that and his work in classes, create examples that are tied to the farm or country environment so it's easier for him to see where principles apply in the real world. And also to stress that he only has to do the necessary competencies. So the stuff that he brings to the table as an adult student, we're not going to make him redo what he already knows. So we're hoping that that would help reduce his stressors. Thank you so Absolutely. much for your uh, for Absolutely. your excellent answers. Uh, does yeah. anyone want to add anything before we move on so that everybody has their uh, has their turn? I, I just want to just link something uh, to the documents. Uh, thank you very much for bringing these these two uh, very uh, very positive, very strategic uh, position. But if we just like go back to the document for just to show you, and and I'm not taking like I'm gonna just take that moment just to look at it. So let's say sometimes, like you said, making connection, talking to the to the students, having that conversation. But if you notice over here, the observable measure behaviors act impulsive, but you know, constantly move. Okay, he may not have all of these, but he may have some of he and notice how the strategy just to set down like creating rules and standard. I'm not saying to use all of these, but to use some of them that are applicable. This is just a list of strategies to inspire you to be to, to try. It's a trial and error. And like like uh, like Vicky mentioned and Vienna mentioned your, your groups mentioned there is there is ideas you could get here and that list could keep on growing every time right so yeah Julie you want to go with the, yes. the second uh, for Angelo well we know that he has arrived six months ago from the Philippines he's in a science class there are 12 students to this in his group and they are doing a lab uh, practice, if you will, because there is a lab component to the final evaluations. And as they are grouped, Angelo is a little uh, uneasy with uh, how the groups were put together. And he insists on that he, well, he needs to have very good grades. It's important for him. And it's unfair that not everybody in his group is doing the same thing he is. Some are on their phone, eat, sleep, while others work diligently. I'm summarizing to keep the time to the shortest I can. And then the student, uh, the teacher went and spoke to them, gave them uh, the standards, ex you know, the expectations for this assignment. And after class, met with them a second time in a separate room to check how they had advanced, found out that Angelo is, uh, is you know, coming from a different uh, country, but the other two have also different uh, different contexts. One's working 25 hours a week on top of going to school, and the other one is the father of a three-month-old baby boy. Now, for teams uh, three and four, for Angelo, uh, spokesperson, spokesperson for uh, room three, go ahead. We are listening okay, intently. It's going to be me. I'll make it short and sweet. So Absolutely. Patrick and I, and um, it was interesting. We started talking about what it's like teaching in adult ed. And really, we talked about even beforehand, what would be good is to get the group together and really, even before we touch course content, 
uh, sensitize the group to each other's home and life realities. Um, then we also talked about international students, how international students have different ways of interacting, how they work in school in general. So having a discussion around that, you know, how to talk to the teacher, how to talk to peers, really setting expectations for the whole group. And, um, you know, bringing things back to the document, it was really interesting because, I mean, started the discussions, we started thinking, we started looking at diagnoses for a second, and then we're like, wait a second, no. We're asked to observe behaviors and react accordingly. We're not psychologists, do not make a diagnosis. And then sort of like, okay, we started going to the table of contents and trying to narrow down the category of observable behaviors. And interestingly enough, like it didn't really fit perfectly, but I think we saw one at the end, it was a uh, personal and uh, personal life management. And then we were just about to start looking at strategy and then we ran out of time because we we're having such amazing conversation. That's us. Anything else? Questions, comments? Thank you, Abby, for, yes. Anyone else? Do we go to room uh, four for their input? All right, so let's look at the other uh, the other group that had to deal with Angelo's. This is Nadine, I can just touch on it quickly. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, so I just, just uh, I just copied and pasted uh, the, uh, the details about performance anxiety and then just write to the solution. So have learners name their personal limits and fears, encourage them to clarify their thoughts and with the student review what will be evaluated and the weighting. So what's tricky and I don't know, I can relate to Angelo. I had a lot of group projects in Concordia and you had to carry the weight. I don't know, I had some trauma from that. So uh, um, yeah, I think, um, I think the teacher has a responsibility to understand that in adult ed, People have different objectives, and um, I think that would be incorporated into the marking for mm -hmm. uh, group marking versus individual. Yeah, and I like that you are relating. You, you wrote it. You wrote there that you want to make. You want them to relate to you and see that it's happened to you as well, and it happens in other life situations as well. So this is very interesting. Uh, this is awesome. Thank you very much for uh, for your uh, input for Angelo's situation. Before we move may, on to Fred. Can I speak for a sec? Yes, you may. Sure. <laughs> uh, I'm Jason, I'm the other half of the yes. group. I just, and I didn't have the document. My partner had to read it to me, but before it even got to the bottom, my first comment to Angelo was that other people have different situations and it's, you know, and I think the big learning situation there is to not judge someone else based on, oh, they're on their phone, oh, they're doing this and that. I could have probably told you that the people worked a job or had children, the majority of the adults do. And I think not just in education, I think empathizing for other people's situations is a quality that is sorely missing from today's society. Mm -hmm. um, more so, you can see I had a couple of specific suggestions like breaking the marks into, you know, smaller chunks, section by section, so someone like Angelo could be more comfortable with the mark they're receiving. But I think at the end of the day, my, my biggest thing would be to try to help all of the students understand that having a high mark isn't necessarily the most important thing in this situation mm -hmm. and even talking about how you have to carry other people through yeah. this and, and i like that, that you're, I you went in that perspective but uh -huh. um like when i was working and my wife was home with our son for five or six years was she carrying me through the child raising was i carrying her through the working i don't think partnerships work like that and i think yeah. it, i don't i don't think it's an appropriate way to look at the situation mm -hmm. and i like that you turned it around from you know from uh so that angelo would understand that in he you know in the situation that he's in the community that he has joined people have different uh, lifestyles and different situations this is very interesting thank you jason for your comments yeah, and and I do appreciate that the kind of competency that you're bringing up here with J, uh, with with this uh, the student with Angelo it goes beyond classrooms, and that is interesting because this is something he will challenge, like he will face throughout his life, not just mm -hmm. in the classroom. So and that it's a great a conversation for the class, the whole class. But specifically, you know, something that he may need to work on more specifically. Yeah, moving so, on to Fred. Well, uh, I, I last Sorry. thing I'll say, I promise, I'd wager that the adult with children or the person working 25 hours a week 
would over time have something very interesting to contribute to this project, even if they were sleeping on their desk a bit, even if they were looking at their phone a bit, I'd wager that you can't judge a book by its cover and that we'd all contribute in our own ways, even if some are less visually obvious. Maybe that person's on their phone checking on their kid. Maybe they're looking for attention from other group members because they want to ask someone to ask so they can talk about the different things they've got going on. And I think learning from those experiences very rich. in a roundabout way would contribute here. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm done. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. We're all adult learners in our classrooms anyway. Mm -hmm. So if 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 we go to uh, scenario C, here we have, uh, if I summarize Fred's situation, she just happens to be a student who had previous negative experience with the language, and uh, she's very shy. And through sometimes that odd, awkward, like we call it the hallway conversation, we get to know more about them. And in this case over here, uh, Fred, it's like, uh, like we say here, we struck up a conversation and she let it slip that she has a horrible experience with an English teacher in the past. And even she told her she couldn't read. And from there, um, I wanted to boost her confidence because she does have potential and I'm not sure how. So if we talk about scenario um, C, uh, room group five, what would you have to say about it, please? Okay, so that's us. Uh, we kind of broke it down as to behaviors, priorities, and interventions. So uh, the behavior is that she has extremely low self-esteem and self-confidence because of what her previous teachers had told her, and that's why she's withdrawn in the classroom. Um, the priority would be to develop a relationship with the student uh, based on trust and then to provide work to the students where she can be successful, so to increase that self-esteem a little bit at a time. And then in terms of interventions um, in the document, Intervene to Succeed, we kind of saw that there was some correlations between the reading and writing, but also some anxiety caused by that low self-confidence again. So uh, we said we wanted to reduce the number of exercises. We wanted to allow the adult to complete work orally to build the, up her self-esteem prior to uh, throwing her into a writing exercise. We wanted to divide tasks into small parts, and we thought that tutoring could be helpful. Even peer tutoring sometimes could be uh, really helpful with this adult learner. And then last but not least, in terms of her anxiety, we want to just encourage the, the learner to focus on present and not what her prior teachers had told her. Yeah, excellent yeah. points. Thank you. And if we take a look at group six, room six, thank you so much, Emily. Uh, so we also, we started by looking at the behavior. So we saw insecurity, anxiety, lack of trust. Um, we said like the main intervention would be to somehow build the trusting relationship. So we said to try to lessen the anxiety and security, we can try to do this by talking to Fred before class when we're alone, because there was a portion that said he comes into class early, uh, present topics to discuss beforehand to, so that we could review anything that's unclear or the student doesn't understand before a class discussion, asking questions to find out how else we can help, have empathy for how the student's feeling, and create opportunities to work in small groups so the student can share ideas in front of fewer people. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Thank you, so these complemented each other. Uh, anybody else would like to add something? Okay, let's move on to scenario D. I'm sorry, we seem like we're pushing and just limited on time. You wanted to get everybody to get a feel of everybody's scenarios, so. And I hope you don't mind me highlighting in the document, but I think that some of the things that you're saying make a lot of sense and I want to highlight them. So for Dylan, uh, history class, Dylan sits in the back, isolated from others, hoodie is up, headphones on, refuses to make eye contact. When you try to speak to him, says he preferred to be left alone. Once you insisted, just stood up and left the class. At lunch in the staff room, conversations are going on and it's clear that you're not the only one struggling with him. You join in the conversation, discovered that he has a very hard time focusing, cannot stay on task, refuses any kind of help whatsoever. This is all fine and good, but where should I start? So for Dylan, what did team number seven have to say? 
Hi, everybody. I don't oh. know if I'm the smokes person. I was hoping Heather would have turned on her thing, but <laughs> no such luck. No such luck. <laughs> Um, so we, we thought the Dylan's was a little bit vague. We would have liked a little bit more information. So we thought that could maybe be a starting point as well. Um, we thought maybe it could be performance anxiety. We were saying it may be a problem with concentration and attention and maybe something going on at home. Um, like I said, we were a little bit vague. Uh, we really wanted to speak to the student alone, um, seeing as they walked out when we tried to do it in class. We felt that maybe they uh, felt put on the spot or maybe they felt that they couldn't communicate uh, in a group of people. So maybe try to bring them out. Um, and if it wouldn't be with the, either the teacher or the professional, we definitely want it to be with somebody that they trust or already have a rapport with to find out what the underlying issue may be. Um, uh, to do, we uh, we did say well, the other teachers did say a couple points, but they didn't really go into detail whether or not that this was a behavior that has been. It says always, but that doesn't say when it started. Like, is this the beginning of the new year that it started? Is it something that's been going on for the last few years? If there are students that's been there for a long time, so it would be really nice to know when it started to see if there may be an underlying reason that may be happening at home that may not have nothing to do with us, or if they've maybe had another course that they've started that maybe they're having difficulty with, or multiple courses that they're maybe taking on too much of a workload, et cetera. Um, so we talked about that. We also talked about the possibility of them maybe having a past IEP. Uh, so, in, however, in adult ed, of course, we have to get the, teach, the students permission to have access to the IEP if they're over the age of 18 or their parents' permission if they're between the ages of 16 and 18. So we talked about the possibility of making sure the student is aware of that as well. Um, so again, it really, I think it, this one comes down to really speaking to the student in some variety to see what is going on. Um, it, it, we're working with adults, so of course we need their permission for a lot of things to go forward and we definitely need them to be talking with us, even if it's the slightest bit to be able to move forward to see what they want and how they, we can help them with it. Whether it's maybe getting a psychological evaluation in order to see if they have ADHD, if maybe that's an issue, dyslexia, maybe that's causing some difficulties in concentration. Um, even just to be knowing which bracket we're in to be able to follow which like is a great uh, form, but just to know which one we'd be following, we definitely need more information. Absolutely. It's very yeah. interesting though what you pointed out that you would look like to know more about Dylan and what the circumstances were. But again, we're focusing on just observable. So the conversations are also a little bit, you know, minimal in that sense. So you do what I, you can. I, I apologize. Maybe it's because my view of no, thinking because I'm not, not a teacher. I'm a counselor well, in education. So I'm usually the person that takes them out of class. I don't do actually not do not apologize. This is perfectly <laughs> fine. It's actually very interesting that you pointed it out because then it pushes you to do the interventions on the spot and then consult, ask more questions, maybe flag that student to another person to intervene. So your observations were perfect in that we wanted to hear that. And we're glad we heard that from you saying, I don't know enough about this student, but all you have to work with right now is what you can see and what you hear, but you want to know more. And this is, you know, kudos to you for wanting to know more and wanting to go the extra mile with that student. So this is yeah. awesome. Thank you very much, everybody. We're going to keep you for two, three minutes extra, if you don't mind. We have a few slides, but just really just a few slides to go. So thank you, Micheline. I am going to let you uh, introduce the next one. Yeah, I just wanted to go over one thing. Remember, there's no right or wrong answers. We're talking about people and everybody. Again, everybody has a role to play. And please just remember the teacher or the, the people who are in touch with that student are the ones who make the connection. They're always part of the equation. And it's a, it takes a team to work with a student. It's not one person, right? So having open communication, it's really, really important. So what we wanted to show you the next slide is just we put together for you a, a, an infography for you to, 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 to remember how to use it and why we're using it. So you could have it put, uh, uh, you could print it out and keep it with you on the five W's why we use this. That, could go with the the booklet and also uh just to 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 give you the final words Julie I don't know. yep yeah. um now that we we're over and we're done with the session we hope that you have been uh made more familiar with intervene to succeed of course this is a very very quick glance at this wonderful tool we hope you were able to identify we know that you were able to identify observable measurable uh, behaviors and find possible solutions although there are several others that we can uh, add and we hope you're going to be implementing intervene to succeed in your milieu uh, and of course make it your own uh, all of this will be available in pdf format uh, soon and 
you have here our credentials, our uh, emails, the feedback form will be uh, in the chat as well. Micheline, I'm going to let you finish uh, with our information and put this in the chat for everybody. Yeah, so you see, thank you all for coming. And obviously your heart is with the students. Our hearts are all with the students. And just remember, don't be so hard on yourself. Working with students is very difficult. And 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 it's 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 okay to to have these conversations. It's okay not to know. It's okay to 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 have teamwork to do that. You're not alone. We're all feeling the same pressure. We're all we're all in it together. And that's why these kind of documents, these kind of exercises that we put together, it's just a conversation starter. Notice that every scenario that we showed you today could have been a whole two, three hour conversation, right? So just to keep that in mind, I know we went at it like at it pretty fast, but these are people and it's okay to have these to keep them part of the conversation also. So don't be too hard on yourself. Work in teams. Ask questions. We'll get there. We're all in it together. And, and, we, are, and we are available for you anytime. Uh, you can reach out to us anytime for any type of help that you may need. And uh, we hope to see you all in, uh, in different workshops or even uh, in, in a more personal meeting at some point. Super. So we wish you a very good afternoon and please fill up the feedback uh, form for us uh, so we could improve ourselves. Thank you. So, thank you.